Hi, this is Charles Kelly. How are you doing today? Right, I'm going to give you seven quick steps to transform your finances in 2021. It's going to sound complicated, but it's not. So just, just bear with me. Now, whatever your New Year's resolutions are, uh, what, what I would just overall, my overall advice would be to set realistic, achievable goals and write them down. A written goal well, it's only a goal, really, if it's written down in the first place. A written goal has, you know, hundreds of times more chance of, of, of coming to fruition than a vague thought in your mind. You know, I'd like to go here on holiday and you know, I'd like to, you know, if you write it down, you start thinking about it more clearly and you set it out in writing, it can make a huge difference. So that's the first thing is to, is to write it down. But my f seven steps, actually, most of these steps uh, are, are set out and, and clearly, uh, more clearly in my book. Yes, money can buy you happiness. So if you're looking for a, a good stocking filler th this this Christmas or, or for this for the for the new year, then why not have a think about my book? Yes, money can buy you happiness. Get it on Amazon. If you can't get to the shops, you can order this on Amazon. You don't have to go out and buy anything in the shops. And I'll, I'll come back to this in a second. There's a few tips in there that can really help you get your finances in order. But here are the first steps, the first the, the seven steps. OK, first thing is to review your finances and start saving. Now, you remember my early uh, earlier episode, I, I said that the coronavirus in this year has taught us a major financial lesson, and that is that most people don't have any savings. They don't have any backup behind them. They don't have any reserves. You know, companies and councils and governments always keep reserves. When I was a councillor, we had millions of pounds in reserves. I said, what do you want to, you know, you've got a whole year's worth of stuff here in reserves. They said, no, we need that. And, and they were right, because if anything goes wrong, they've got money to, to fall back on. Uh, so most people don't have that. They don't even have one month's uh, expenses in the bank. So you hear people saying, well, I've just been made redundant. Uh, I've been working 30 years. I've always paid my taxes. I've worked 30 years. I've been made redundant and I can't pay my next month's rent or my next month's mortgage. And this is not uncommon. I know that people have life. You know, they have things to do. They have kids, they have mortgages, they have debts and all that sort of stuff. They want to go on holiday. But I urge you to start reviewing your finances and start saving so you've got a buffer there so that if any, if we do have any other disasters, what, what more could you, you expect in the, in the coming year? You've always got something there behind you. It's not just when there's a, a pandemic. I'm talking about things when your boiler breaks down or, or when uh, your car breaks down, when you have to, a major expense to pay out for. You have to have a buffer there. You have to have some savings. I know we all need to save for pensions and long term things and, and deposits for mortgage, but you have to have a buffer there. At least three to six months of money in the bank so that you, you, you feel then secure, you feel safe. You know the expression, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Well, one of the reasons that the rich have money behind them and when things go wrong they can handle it they also have insurance for things you know when you hear about people say oh things gone wrong have you got insurance no i didn't think about having insurance uh, the, the wealthy people always have things covered they review things and have things covered and have insurance okay so step number two is to review your consumer debt and credit cards and when i'm talking about consumer debt i'm not talking about buy to let mortgages you should review those as well of course but any debts you've got but especially those those de credit card debts and expensive loans. You know, could you get a cheaper deal elsewhere? Could you move your money and get an interest-free card somewhere else? And there are, there are out, they are out there. If you just search online, they're out there. Uh, and then pay off the, the, the one that you're paying 20% on, get it interest-free for, for a year or more, and then try and pay that off using the interest that you save to, to pay extra capital to pay that card off. Uh, really, you shouldn't be borrowing on credit cards. It's a hugely expensive way of, of borrowing money anyway. And this is the other thing that wealthy people do, they get access to cheap credit. The poor can't get access to cheap credit. They're always ripped off by payday lenders, payday loans, uh, pawnbrokers. Uh, they're always paying the most for their credit, whereas the wealthy people can go and borrow money at 2%. And you know, big, big institutions can borrow even lower than that. Uh, but, but but the poor people always seem to, to, to pay more for everything, and especially when they're borrowing money, because banks don't want to give them the facilities that, that, that working people and normal people would, would get. You know, if, you, if you're really down there at the bottom end, the banks don't really want to help you. They don't even want your account, actually. OK, step number three is to review your spending habits. Uh, now, as I said about saving, people say, well, I can't afford to save, but you can afford to save. If you review your spending habits, and a lot of this is covered in my book, the, the, the Three Steps of Money Management. 
and also how to become a smart money manager. I've done a whole section on that, the smart money manager system here. I know you might be able to read that back to front, but it says smart money manager system in my book, Yes, Money Can Buy You Happiness. That, that's what you need to do is, is to review what you're spending on. Now, I was a financial advisor for, for 25 years. I was fully qualified. I'm not registered anymore as I don't practice as a financial advisor. But when I went into the people that had their finances in a mess, they had the least amount of money. Sometimes they were earning good money, but they just couldn't handle their money. You know, they had all the latest gadgets. They had the massive TVs, the biggest TVs you can find. Sometimes it covered the whole living room wall. And, and they had all these gadgets, mostly on credit, of course, uh, but they couldn't afford to save. And yet other people I met who had less money coming in by carefully planning things, they still had things that they, that they wanted, but they saved for them. They, they took time to get them. They didn't say, I want it now, and I've got to pay this in-store credit at 29%. And they managed to save money for the short-term things and save money for the long-term things as well. I, I met people with less money that managed to save, they managed to buy second properties, and, and yet they were on you know jobs that barely were, were just above minimum income at the time. And yet they still, I don't know how they did it. You know, they still managed to save and, and invest and they're, they're financially comfortable now. Whereas I met people who are on hundreds of thousand pounds a year whose finances were in a mess because they just kept spending, spending, spending like there was no tomorrow. Well, tomorrow comes sometimes and, and the job might not be there. So how long can you last without a job if you're just spending, spending, spending? You know, Brian Tracy, the speaker said that most people in America, and I think that includes here, are, are only, uh, you know, three paychecks from bankruptcy and foreclosure. So if they miss those two or three paychecks, those three three salaries, that they're, they're finished. You know, they haven't got any more money, and that's true for most people in this country, as we find out found out from the pand pandemic and, and the coronavirus situation. And number four then is to review your utility suppliers, your energy, your mobile phone. You know, I made a call to uh, one of the energy. I think it was EDF. And I didn't, I didn't really want to switch, but I just said, what deal can you offer me? And they said, well, we've got, we got this cheaper tariff here. So I'm thinking, well, why didn't they put me on that in the first place? Uh, no, they put me on a cheaper tariff. I've saved about 50 pounds a month there. Um, and it, it's amazing, just from a phone call, that's all I, I did was make, make a phone call. Now you can go online, you can switch, you can find out you know, which, which energy supplies are, are giving you the best deal, or you can phone around or, or whatever you want to do. But you should always look at that. Now, I believe that the, the regulator is trying to, make, uh, trying to make it mandatory that energy companies should uh, automatically put people on the cheapest tariffs. Because what are they doing? You know, the, the electricity, they're just billing you for electricity going through your house. They don't even make the pipe works and, and all these sorts of things. Uh, you know, that's on the national grid. They're just charging you for, for this power that's coming through to your house. And, and they talk about tariffs and this tariff and that tariff, the blue tariff, the green tariff. You know, really, they should be just charging everybody a low tariff. You know, it's, it's just a, lo a load of nonsense. It's quite frankly, it's a bit of a rip off. Um, and then you end this tariff and they don't tell you it's ended. They just they just let you pay a higher rate. You know, it's, it's just it's just unbelievable. Now, energy is, is a big, big expense in most people's houses, despite the fact that oil prices have gone down. Uh, energy prices haven't gone down much, have they? They, they still stayed high. Anyway, that's another another uh, a subject, but review that and review your mobile phone contract. A lot of people leave that for two or three years. They're paying this high rate that they paid when they, they bought the phone, when they acquired the phone. And that contract included the cost of, of the, the phone, you know, maybe a, an expensive iPhone for £1,500. Well, their tariff includes the purchase of that. So you need to review that after a year or two. Maybe you can get a new phone, but maybe you can get a cheaper tariff. Sometimes, all it takes is a phone call. You don't even need to switch from T-Mobile to Vodafone. Sometimes it just takes a phone call and they don't want to lose you as a customer. So rather than lose you, they'll say, right, we'll knock off £30 a month. We'll knock off £50 a month. You know, that's £500 a year, you could just say, just from a phone call. And over the years, these things build up. So review all of your utility suppliers. Um, water, you can't do much about, but certainly gas, electricity, uh, any energy, mobile phone, landline, Sky TV, whatever it is, just review it. Don't just let it run on and on for years, because uh, it's the same with mortgages. People, a lot of people are paying variable rate mortgages at expensive rates, and I worked for banks, so I know this is true, and they didn't review it, they just left it. And, and they could easily just make a phone call and say, right, switch me on to this rate or this discount or this. And all the, all the lender would do there is maybe charge you a fee, but they just want to lock you in for a couple of years more. And, and if you're going to stay with that company anyway, why not pay a lower rate? Now that could save you thousands of pounds a year, literally thousands of pounds a year. The other thing then is to review your ISA, uh, your, your pensions. 
and, and, and use your tax allowances for the year. Now, I know it's quite early that the tax year doesn't end to the, you know, the end of March or early April, uh, but now's the time to start looking around. Don't leave it to the last minute and then be rushing out to try and make your contributions to top up your pension and, and your ISA. Now, I know a lot of people haven't got any money at the moment, but a lot of people have got money. They've got money sitting in a bank earning them nothing when they could be sort of transferring it maybe into an ISA where they get a higher rate, it's tax free. Um, or or put or topping up their pension scheme uh, to to save tax to get tax relief and to, to 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 save for that future rather than just leaving it lying around. Again, when I worked for banks, I had people uh, sitting on hundreds of thousands of pounds in in obsolete accounts. This is another trick of the bank; they make your account obsolete and drop the rate. And we'd say to them, well, why not just switch it into this account uh, and over there? You know, and it's just a, a simple form and you could sort of double the rate you're getting. So, no, no, I'm happy with that account. I, I like that account. Why? What, what do they like about it? You know, they say, oh, well, I, I can get my money out immediately. But you haven't touched it for 10 years. <laughs> so sometimes just by moving it from one account to another, they could they could double the return. So you've got to review things. You've got to keep looking at things constantly. And now number six is to review your will and inheritance tax liability. I've been through this on previous episodes. Very important. A lot of people don't even have a will, but if you've got a will and it's you know, 10 years old, it's, it's time to review it. Um, use, look at inheritance tax liability, not just for when you die, but now look at things. Maybe you could give away assets and money and gifts to reduce the amount that your family would have to pay to the government on inheritance tax. Um, I mean, again, you know, you've earned all this money all your life. And then, you know, when you, you make a profit, they come and say, we want our share, our fair share. Give us the, give us your, t some of your profit. And then when you die, they say, well, we, we want our share of that as well. You know, we want our, our money from, from your estate that you've saved up all these years. So you can mitigate these liabilities and, and you, can, you can save on tax by giving, making lifetime gifts, for instance, um, you know, giving stuff away, put it using trust. You need to take advice on this. And it, you might think, well, I'm not the Duke of Westminster, but you don't have to be the Duke of Westminster to pay inheritance tax. You know, you could be paying inheritance tax on the average house of, you know, anything over half a million is, is, is probably subject to inheritance tax for most people. You know, if you've got an average house in the southeast, your house could be worth six, seven hundred, eight hundred thousand. That's before you've added in all the other uh, savings and assets that you've got. Uh, so just look at that. Review that. You know, now it's, it's something that's very important. And, and just look at your will and, and look at possible inheritance tax liabilities. You can look up these things or you can take advice from a sister or an accountant, but definitely you need a will. That you can do very, very cheaply. You can, you can do it yourself, but I would recommend using a solicitor and make sure you choose carefully who the executors are. I wouldn't recommend uh, particularly, I wouldn't recommend particularly family members because um, sometimes they don't know what they're doing. You can have family squabbles. I, I would recommend you use a professional to, to do the executive part that looks after the will and, and dealing with probate of the estate later on. So, so do look at that. Review your will and inheritance tax liability. And number seven, the last thing is to review your tax. Uh, if you're one of these people that have to submit a tax return every year, you've got until the, the end of January, 31st of January, to submit your tax return. Otherwise, you'll be into to fines and penalties. So, so do that. Really, you should have all that done and dusted now. Um, Christmas is, is usually a good time to, when you've got a bit of it, spare time to get all your tax return done and, and get all those papers together. But it's very important, if you, especially if you're running a business, uh, to, to get all that in, in order. So, so those are the seven steps. One, review your finances. Start saving some money, for goodness sake. Two, review your consumer debts and credit cards. Try and pay them off if you can or use interest-free credit if you can't do that. Uh, three, uh, review your spending habits. Use the three R methods that I talked about in my book, Yes, Money Can Buy You Happiness. And number four, uh, review your utility suppliers, especially energy, gas, electricity, mobile phones, sky, whatever it is, landline, just review it. You can save fortunes by making a simple phone call. Number five, review your ISA and pensions and use up your tax allowances. If you've got money sitting in one account, you can put it into a tax-free account. Now's the time to start thinking about it and not leave it till the end of March. Uh, number six, review your will and look at possible inheritance tax liability. Look at what you could do to mitigate that during your life, not later on when it's 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 past. I mean, you know, when, when somebody dies, uh, it, it can be a nightmare sorting out estates and 
especially if someone hasn't got an up-to-date will and hasn't left instructions of where things are, where this account is, where that account. It can be a nightmare for 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 uh, uh, you know, in relatives uh, trying to root through papers. I, I've I've seen this firsthand. So get it organised. You know, get it get it organised. Review your will. You might have a will already, but just keep it up to date and and put things clearly in writing. That will avoid a lot of family squabbles. And I've seen it firsthand myself. I've seen people trying to claim this and claim that and claim there's uh, missing wills. And all. It's all a load of nonsense. You've got to get it clear, review your will, and I would recommend using a solicitor rather than a DIY job from WH Smith. And number six then is to review your tax. Make sure you've got your tax return submitted before the end of January. And, and that, that would be it. So if you're looking for a, a nice present to help people with their, with their finances, I'll give one final plug to my book. Yes, money can buy you happiness. You can get it on Amazon. You don't even need to go to the shop with a mask on. Get this book and it will help transform your, your finances in 2021. So, so do stay safe. Um, you know, it's been a tough year 2020, uh, but hopefully things will get better in 2021 and we can all move forward. And I wish you a very happy new year and hope it will be a successful one for you. Thanks for listening and bye for now.